Hi, welcome to another pause break video. Uh, a lot of people like to do pickups videos for YouTube to show people you know what they're adding to their collection, and uh, I thought I would try to do one myself. So, uh, but I recently picked up uh, about 15 different titles, and uh, I thought I would share those with you today. Um, over the last few months, I haven't been picking up much, like since Christmas, and I got maybe a couple new games. Uh, that were, you know, bought retail new, but most of the stuff I like to show off uh, is old stuff that I, I happen to find. It's not necessarily anything expensive, it's just like, well, these are games I used to play, it's neat, and uh, I thought you guys might like to have a look at them. So, uh, I got a little bit of game footage for each one of these, so uh, in between the talking and me discussing each one, I'll show you some game footage for each of the uh, video games I'm going to talk about. <coughs> Let's see. I think the uh, first one we'll start off with is uh, a game called Grabbed by the Goonies for the... Sorry, Grabbed by the Ghoulies for the Xbox. Um, this game is kind of uh, cartoony looking. Like, it almost has a cell shaded sort of look. And uh, it seems to be, like, really cute, but almost kind of uh, creepy at times. Uh, it was a rare game, the same people that made... Uh, the Golden Eye series, so <clears throat> I thought uh, I would pick this up. I heard a lot of good things, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, I'll be able to do you know some video gameplay on it soon. Maybe do a review, but uh, it's it's it seems to be really neat. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, another game that I picked up was this is purely on the uh, box art because I, I really enjoy box art, like anything they used to advertise a video game, uh, that sort of thing. So, uh, this game was solely picked up because of the way it looked on the front. And uh, I want you guys to get that kind of perspective, too. So, uh, it's called Black Stone Magic and Steel for the Xbox. See? Like, that's why it appeals to me. Because it looks very RPG-ish. Um, it's really fantasy-based, uh, I don't know, graphics. I mean, drawing. I mean, it's, it's, it's some neat stuff. Plus, it's called Black Stone Magic and Steel, and you can't go wrong with that. Uh, what I've seen of it so far, it's uh, a lot wilder than I expected. Like some really crazy music in the background. Um, a lot of hack and slash sort of stuff. I kind of expect it to be more RPG oriented, but uh, I haven't heard anything about it uh, up until you know, I bought it. So I'm um, pretty excited to, to uh, maybe do a video on this one too. But uh, yeah, Black Stone, Magic and Steel for the Xbox. Well, one more Xbox game I picked up the other day. For some reason, I've been on an Xbox and PS2 kick. I think it's simply because they're so cheap right now. Uh, you can get them for practically nothing. Uh, page 3, a game store that um, I go to all the time, I work at sometimes, is uh, or had a sale last year at... Uh, when was it? Um, Black Friday. They had a sale on, uh, on Black Friday where they had... PS2 games and Xbox 360 games, 75% off, and that was an incredible sale, and I more than tripled both of those collections uh, that day for those sales, so I have quite a few PS3 or PS2 and Xbox games now. But, you know, here's another one I, I didn't pick up that I, I wanted to uh, go ahead and get. That's uh, Broken Sword for the uh, Xbox. Broken Sword the Sleeping Dragon. <clears throat> the first Broken Sword game that uh, I'm aware of was the PS1 game. And uh, it was uh, like cartoon looking. Um, it was uh, drawn graphics, I would imagine. And uh, it was a point and click adventure for the PlayStation. And being a fan of games like Discworld and uh, Day of the Tentacle, Leisure Suit Larry, if you've seen that episode of Pause Break, uh, I, I, I tend to like these type of games. And this one looks a lot different. Of course, it's it's in 3D. And any time a game transitions from 2D to 3D, I kind of get a little wary, you know, about how good it's going to be. But you know, the box art looks cool. It's it's real classy looking. Um, after playing the first little bit, I thought it was pretty funny, like the narration and stuff. It's kind of corny now. I made at the time it was you know mind blowing or whatever. But uh, I think I'll have a lot of fun playing it. So it's got some really good dialogue. It's, it's pretty neat. <laughs> That's it for the Xbox games that I picked up. Um, I got one PS2 game that I picked up. Um, you know, I, I told you I've, I've bought a lot of PS2 games uh, lately because they're so cheap right now. Now's the time to buy in case you know, you're wondering. But 
here's one that I picked up and I, I have high hopes for actually. It's it's a Neo Contra for uh, the PS2. Uh, again, this game is extremely cheap, but you know, I, it's Contra. Of course, I'm familiar with from the NES, and uh, it's a wonderful game. And I noticed this one was also made by Konami. So I was really excited to uh, try this out. I mean, the, the stuff on the back, the preview, looks really incredible. Um, what I played of it, it's, it's kind of a top-down shooter, just running and gunning. And uh, it looks like the type of game that uh, me and Zach might play together one day. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to do a video on that. I showed him when he was up here last time, and he said, Ugh, I hate country, you know, but uh, I'm pretty excited. He looked at it for a long time, so maybe he's interested. But uh, hopefully we'll get a video on that. But yeah, Neo Contra looks pretty cool. <clears throat> I picked up some Nintendo 64 games. Um, it's hard to say where the market is on 64 right now. Like, uh, I want to say that, you know, it's it's past the time for the, the prices to rise on, on the 64 games, but, you know, they, they tend to remain really, really dirt cheap. Um, most of the games range around five bucks, and the most expensive, maybe what, 50, 70, something like that. So, uh, it's still not a bad time to buy 64 games, even though it's way, you know, off the market. <coughs> um, the first game I want to talk about is uh, Robotron 64. I picked that up because, I mean, I never owned it. Uh, I had a friend that used to play it when I was younger, and it looked like just a jumbled mess of colors and shooting. And they had this weird baby looking guy running around with these crazy goggles. <clears throat> Not the kind of game that would interest me back then, but you know, for the the price of like five bucks, it's probably less than five bucks that I picked this up for. Um, it's hard to pass it up. Uh, what I played of it, it looks like just an arcade style shooter. Um, pretty much exactly what I remembered it to be. Crazy techno music playing in the background, and uh, it's it's different, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, Robotron 64. Another game I got was uh, Shadowgate 64 for the Nintendo 64. It's uh, Shadowgate Trials of the Four Towers. Um, this game, I remember playing it a long time ago and thinking, you know, wow, this is you know, completely different from everything else I've played on the 64. Because the 64 had a lot of uh, party games and, you know, almost, I, I hate to say it, but childish games. Uh, yeah, for targeting towards younger audiences, I should say. But uh, I played Shadowgate. <laughs> I rented it from Sean's Video, uh, a local video store where I lived, and uh, played it, and it was extremely difficult. Like, But, you know, picking it back up, playing a little bit to get some footage, it was uh, it was pretty neat to see, you know, what Shadowgate 64 really was. You know, this is after I've played some Elder Scrolls games, finally. Uh, it, it looks like it'd be pretty awesome. I mean, it's... It's kind of slower paced, it's an adventure game, but uh, I think eventually I will be playing through it. I kind of expected something like Hexen 64 or the Hexen games, but it seems to be a lot different. It's, it's, it looks really neat. I was impressed graphically, but the uh, it's got some of those weird sounds like you know the guy eating the meat in the video. The Pretty neat stuff. I'm, I'm excited to play it. <coughs> the last 64 game that uh, I bought that I wanted to uh, share with you and tell you that I bought was uh, Duke Nukem Zero Hour, and you know this one is about as expensive as the uh, that new Duke Nukem game, Duke Nukem Forever. You know they're both dirt cheap. Uh, Duke Nukem Zero Hour is a far cry from Duke Nukem 64, the which was you know the most famous Duke Nukem game for me, or the most uh, well remembered because it was ported to so many different things. But uh, it's it's definitely different. It's you know it's fully 3D and uh, it doesn't look very good. It doesn't play very good. It's it doesn't feel like Duke Nukem to me. But it's it's still it's it's a part of history and it might be something I get into later. But uh, yeah, Duke Nukem Zero Hour. It, it, think about it. It's it's kind of interesting to reflect and think about how far Duke Nukem has fallen. Like how. Everything has changed so much since the Duke Nukem days. You know, but he was so edgy and cool back then. You know, it's like almost like Laser Shoot Larry. Uh, but things today are so just rough. I mean, there's games like Manhunt out there. They're just you know insanely violent and just like hyper violent games like that. And 
you know, pornography in video games. So it's it's hard to be like shocked by Duke Nukem anymore. So you know, his his trick is has been seen and it's it's over, sadly. But he's just kind of a aging old man that nobody cares about. It's 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 sad to see. You know, not like Mario. But, <laughs> um, anyway. Picked up one game on the NES. Uh, normally, I like to pick up a lot more. It's one of my favorite systems, but uh, I couldn't help. I couldn't help myself. I I don't know what I was gonna say. I helped but pass this up. What's up? Never mind. I couldn't help but get Willow for the NES. First of all, it's it's a Capcom game for the NES, and Capcom can do no wrong, or could do no wrong in my eyes during the Super Nintendo. Nintendo era. I just, everything they put out was gold to me. So, uh, I never played Willow. I've I honestly never even watched the movie, and I know that's that's terrible. I should watch the movie because I probably appreciate this more. It's got Flitwick in it, right? But, uh, I, I picked up the game, I'd heard some good things about it, and uh, the first little bit that I played, I was really impressed. I mean, graphically, it looks really neat. It's colorful, it's really pretty. Um, really nice looking graphics for uh, Nintendo, like some advanced kind of uh, swaying of the grass and stuff going on that I noticed. Uh, it plays a little bit like uh, Secret of Mana is what I thought about when I was playing it. So um, it might be something you know, I end up playing through eventually. Uh, maybe do a video on it. I think a lot of people have covered this already, but either way, it'll be fun to play through. So uh, yeah, that's Willow for the NES. <clears throat> I have a few Super Nintendo games left. First one is a childhood favorite. It's True Lies, and uh, you may you may notice the the rainbow there, the LTD, and LTD is notorious for just awful, awful games. But I couldn't help like in all honesty, I, I had to play this in a long time. And when I saw oh sorry not LTD LJN, when I saw LJN on it, I was like there's there's just no way because I remember that being this being such a good game when I was little. Like me and my buddy Blake played it all the time. Um, you know, Hunter Schwarzenegger looked hilarious in it, little sprites shooting his guns. Uh, it was just, it was a fun little action shooter game, top down. Uh, just, we had a blast with it. So it's hard to believe that LJN made it, because they're so notorious for bad games. <coughs> um, it's a licensed game also, you know, of course, everybody's a little weird about that. But, um, it's, it's, it was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. <clears throat> the next game is uh, Scooby-Doo Mystery for the Super Nintendo, and, you know, I love Scooby-Doo, uh, but honestly, there's just not that many good Scooby-Doo games out there. There's just so much crap, for lack of better words. There's so much crap with the Scooby-Doo label on it for video games, and uh, I'm not going to lie, I kind of... This game is kind of crap for me, um, but that's... I hate to call it that, but it's just because I've played its brother, the Sega Genesis version, which is superior in every way. It's just, the Genesis game is so wonderful. I mean, if you look at prices now and compare the two, you can see, you know, apparently everybody else thinks that too, because, you know, this game was two or three dollars. The Sega Genesis game, which I've still yet to find, it's so extremely rare apparently. There's only there's very few listings on eBay. I've never seen it outside the video store that I used to rent it at. Uh, but on eBay, I saw one copy sold for, you know, not listed, but sold for like $40 completed, like a complete Sega Genesis copy. So, I mean, that's a, a wonderful game. I'd love to play it. I'd love to do a video on it. But I'd really like to own the game first. Yeah, I don't really want to emulate it or anything. <clears throat> so, but this game, it's it's okay, I guess. It's just nothing compared to its brother. It it lives in the shadow of the Sega Genesis version. But oh well. The next one is a uh, another movie game. It's the Flintstones, based on the movie for the Super or, you know, for the Super Nintendo. Um, the movie, I love the movie. I love Viva, La Viva Rock Vegas. I love this version of the Flintstones. You know, Betty Rubble is awesome. But, um, the game is, it's different. It's an ocean game, which, you know, they made the, uh, Adam's Family game for the Super Nintendo that I really enjoyed. But, uh, 
it's it plays like it's like a graphically enhanced rescue of Dino and Hoppy, the NES version of the Flintstones game. But uh, and the graphics look really pretty. It's nice. It looks really good. But it's just like there's some flaws with it. It's it's hard to grab onto ledges. Some hit detection problems. Yeah, it's just not as good as it could have been. I'll say that. But uh, I, I've been on a big kick with getting video games that are based on cartoons or movies. You know, a lot of people say they're notoriously bad, but it, it's pure nostalgia for me to play these sort of games. I think, you know, when the movie came out, this game came out, people were like, "Oh, I love the I love the movie so much. I need to have this game." And people hadn't learned their lesson yet because there were actually good games based on movies then. But you know. Either way. Uh, next game is Speedy Gonzales, Los Gatos Bandidos, uh, which now I know means, I think, the Cat Bandits? Los Gatos Bandidos. Uh, I'm a Spanish aficionado, obviously. See, that's French, maybe? Anyways, uh, Speedy Gonzales, Los Gatos Bandidos. I didn't have high hopes for it, but I was really impressed. It plays like Sonic. It's got some cool music, got some awesome, you know, really pretty graphics, big sprites. Uh, I, I always enjoy seeing big sprites on the screen. Uh, it's some neat stuff. Um, hearing the sound clips of the mice talking, it's always pretty funny. But uh, it's it's a game I really think I can get into. I could probably get into and play all the way through it. So uh, that might be one to do in the future. <laughs> anyway, the next game I have here is... Uh, classic. It's actually it's starting to go up in price, I've noticed. Uh, I guess people are starting to really recognize how awesome it is. That's uh, Joe and Mac for the Super Nintendo. Uh, Joe and Mac is a game that's about cavemen. I'm not really sure of the story. I didn't play that much through it. It's been a long time since I played it. I just recorded a little bit of footage. But it's just cavemen, and this is another two-player game me and Zach can play together. Uh, maybe do a video for it, but... Uh, big sprite cavemen beating up on stuff in the game. It's it's really neat. You use your club, you jump around, you hit stuff with the club. Um, I always remember having a lot of fun with it, so I, it's actually kind of difficult, as I recall. But uh, it's it's pretty neat. It's a good game, and um, I'm proud to finally own it. So, uh, yeah, exciting stuff. The, uh, the last game I have is kind of the, uh, the crown jewel of this pickup lot. Um, it's not crazy expensive, or, well, it is pretty rare, but it's not really crazy expensive at this point. But uh, it's a game that I think will continue to go up in price uh, as time goes on, which, you know, most of the good ones do. But uh, I remember this game being, you know, really dirt cheap compared to its uh, sequel. But, um, here, let me take it out of the plastic first before I show you. I hadn't even taken it out of here. I mean, it's, it's not new, it's just it was put in plastic because it's a little more expensive and they're trying to protect it. Um, I've noticed this trend, it's an RPG, heads up, um, it's an RPG for the Super Nintendo, and I've noticed the trend that all of the good RPGs, of course, are really expensive now. And I think now it's getting to the point that people have recollected those uh, RPGs, these uh, Super Nintendo RPGs that era, and uh, now they're trying to collect all, all the RPGs for that era. Like, uh, including the bad ones. You know, even the bad ones are going up in price. And while this is not necessarily a bad game, it's just it's not as well recognized as, say, Chrono Trigger or uh, uh, Super Mario RPG. So, <clears throat> but, uh, this, the game that I picked up, I was really happy to get it at such an awesome price. Uh, thanks to, you know, Page 3. They, they haggled with me a little bit. It was very cool. Um, I got Lufia Part 1, which is the sequel, weirdly enough, and part two is the prequel, but it's, it's Lufia and the Fortress of Doom. Uh, I haven't played much of this game. I played a little bit to get some footage and I've watched some YouTube videos on it, but uh, it has some really neat looking sprites. It's a straight up RPG, uh, really cool looking stuff. I remember seeing it on the shelf a lot uh, whenever I would go to video game stores or uh, rental stores, and uh, I just didn't really care about it. Like, I'd look at the back of the box and, you know, see numbers and such, and I was like, ah, whatever, you know, on a platform, or give me some Mario or something. I wasn't really big into RPGs at the time, and when the Super Nintendo first came out. But, uh, you yeah, know, now I'm trying to collect, of course. 
And uh, I don't have Lufia 2 yet, but I now I own Lufia 1, and I'm, I'm very, very happy to own it. Uh, I've got a lot of the good RPGs for Super Nintendo, so I'll be adding this one to it. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the the main piece in the the pickup for uh, today's pickup. Uh, but you know, actually, I think I've enjoyed doing this video, uh, just talking a bit, little bit about games and open forum sort of stuff. It's unscripted. I know I jumble around words like I am right now, but it's it's fun for me to just talk about video games, which I love to do. So um, I think I'll continue to do these, like once I pick up a few games here and there. So uh, if you like it, please you know hit like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm trying to get my YouTube channel going a little more. Uh, I had it, I'd taken a break from it for a while, but I'd really like to uh, see it go somewhere. You know, I'd, I like to do this sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, that's the 15 games that I have. Uh, oh, sorry, that was 14 games. I just saw the other one over there. Uh, one second, I'll get that. Sorry. Um, last but not least and not best by any means but still very cool um, I'm, I nearly forgot this game uh, I picked up Rena Stimpy Stimpy's invention for the Sega Genesis uh, it's actually it's a complete copy it's really uh, it's not bad looking by any means really nice instruction manual uh, little plastic tabs broke off of the Genesis uh, cart or the Genesis box but you know most of them are because they're, they're hard to keep but uh, yeah, I picked this game up. It was really, really cheap. And uh, me and my buddy Zach played through it. And uh, well, we played some of it. We didn't make it all the way through it. And uh, we recorded that. So that if that's not on the YouTube channel already at this point, when this gets on there, it will be on there soon. Um, we had fun playing it. It's it's just as funny as I remembered it 20 years ago. So uh, it's a uh, a really cool game. The Stimpy's Invention, the Rena Stimpy game. But, uh, yep, that's the last of my pickups. I'm done talking. Uh, as I said before, if you enjoyed it, please, you know, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. If there's any of these games, you know, you'd like to tell me about, you'd like to discuss, you know, just send me a message, you know, just talk to me. I'd be happy to. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, pause break, and it's, it's really appreciated. So I'll see you guys next video. If you're watching this video, chances are you're interested in the same kind of things that I am, and uh, that's the kind of stuff the Page 3 sells. They've always given me a good deal, whether it's you know buying, selling, trading, whatever. Uh, this is a quick look at their website, where you can check out reviews that the uh, workers have written, uh, including yours truly. Uh, you can also see some of their merchandise, uh, find out what's going on in the store tournament-wise, or uh, even get linked to their eBay store. All of the stuff they have listed on eBay is fairly priced, uh, but they even give you the option of making them an offer on most of the items. So uh, if you're looking for a deal, you know they're not scared to haggle with you. Uh, if you're local, you know stop by and support them. That's that'd be really really kind of you. Uh, there's not too many stores around like this, and especially not in this area. If you're not local, uh, make sure you check them out on eBay. I mean they can make you the type of deals that not everyone can. So uh, you know thanks again for watching.